highlights part to become an AI product manager is to gain the hands-on experience to demonstrate you're capable of doing the work starting from day one. And you know exactly what different kind of interest trends of different AI ML models. In this video, we're gonna give you a real life demo regarding how you gain hands-on experience as AI product manager by integrating AI feature on Instagram. And specifically, we're going to cover the product strategy framework, Gucci framework, comparison between different kind of AI models, how to ensure the trust and safety of different AI models. Stay until the end of this video where we share with the top three tips that all product managers need to master to add AI to a roadmap. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director of product and feature in Forbes and the host of Product Insider Podcast. I've helped thousand people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continues to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we talk about tech trends and free product management training. Like and subscribe, check out the new video every Tuesday. Hi, Hadika. Welcome to the show again. Good afternoon, Nancy. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. So Hadika, last time we talked about how you become a Gen AI PM and you share so many great advice. And in this video, we're going to share with everybody with a hands-on demo, how you put AI on the roadmap of Instagram. So now let's get started. And also everybody, if you don't know Hadika for our next video, she is the senior Gen AI PM from Amazon with over six years experience in the AI space. I'm so happy to have her to give us those hands-on demo with us. Let's think about the most popular app, which is today, Instagram. But no, I think most popular app is TikTok right now, but we never know. Lots of politics things are changing right now. But yeah. uh, as we know, all the social media apps, the people getting access to it every single day. But I don't think they have enough AI element to it. Let's say if you are the product manager for Meta and you're in charge of Instagram, how would you put AI on the roadmap? What would you do using this AI technology? Um, first of all, because we're talking about how will, how will we incorporate AI into Instagram and how will we implement that? Um, I will use the Gucci framework. Uh, so I will think about different aspects. The first thing is, okay, what is our goal here? Our goal is to help Instagram incorporate more stories and videos and content and enable users to share it with their loved ones mm -hmm. in a more in a quicker and more efficient and more creative manner using AI. Now, I would think the second thing I would uh, think about is what is our customer segmentation? So I would think about creators, consumers, third party. I would think about, you know, what are their unmet customer needs in the process? For example, if I were to think about it as a consumer, which I am, What's my biggest pain point when I'm using Instagram? For example, if I want to find a certain channel or if I want to find something very specific, I can't really search for it in a very mm -hmm. concise manner. So yeah. if I don't know the exact account name or exact person's name, it's going to be very hard for me to find out who to follow or, you know, where to learn from. For example, I love, uh, I, I love traveling. I love food. I learn, love learning about different recipes. Now, if I just put travel within Insta search, I'll get a list of, I don't know, a hundred different accounts. Mm -hmm. But again, there has to be a way more, a smarter way for me to identify traveling uh, within the United States with my family in beach or coastal areas. So I have a very right. specific request here and also maybe only to, to, during the weekend or during the long weekend. So I don't mm -hmm. have an, you know, 10 days to travel here. Yeah. Uh, that's number one. The second thing could be that safety, the most important thing, and especially for all the parents out there, uh, the yeah. biggest concern right now when their kids are on Instagram is what kind of content are they going to come across? And mm -hmm. there have been so many uh, conversations about this in the past. So how do we uh, manage the safety aspect on Instagram and on other social media apps for exactly. that matter? And th the third thing could be that how do I also make sure that Instagram right now, we look at it as an entertainment resource, which is great. And I think Insta is doing a great job of that. Mm -hmm. But can we get more out of it? Can we get some kind yeah. of learning or education out of it? So that, you know, you don't think that you're just passing time on it, but you also feel that mm -hmm. you're realizing things in the process. So not only are you getting entertained and getting happy, but you also go back with some learnings. Uh, exactly. So, you know. So that for me as a consumer will be will be really cool if Insta had it for me. Mm -hmm. So that would be my needs. 
uh, obviously, I would think about co- competitors as well. Uh, you mentioned there's TikTok out there, there's yeah. Snapchat, there's X as well, which is, you know, coming up with these uh, insight or interesting videos. I won't say insightful, but I'd say interesting videos. Mm-hmm. And after having done that analysis, I would like to obviously prioritize these pain points and then think about the solutions within an integrated ecosystem. Mm-hmm. So I would like to think about, okay, so I, I talked about, hey, as a consumer for me, how difficult it is to find the right kind of content. Now, what if I could just give an instruction to Instagram? I could open the app and I could say, hey, I, I would like to follow people or accounts which would give me travel ideas to coastal areas during the months of May and June with my family of four. And I only have two or three days to spend within this area. And this is my budget X, Y, Z. And based off of that, like just with a simple uh, voice to text conversion, it would give me the top maybe five to 10 accounts that I need to follow. Mm -hmm. So think about how much, not only how much time have I saved in this process, but how concise my research is now. And I'm not going to Google for this question. I'm coming to Insta because not only will I get access to the people, but I will also get access to the right, to the real-time stories from these people through their real-time experiences, which I'll be able to look at. This is amazing. As you're describing the app feature, I hope people saw it. I was like, uh, I was imagine what the new feature look like will make my life much easier, make my vacation much more fun. Yeah, and planning would be so much easier for you. Exactly, especially mom with two kids and I need lots of time. Oh, yeah. Now, if you put in those search and recommendation as those kind of AI features today, in terms of deploying this, using existing AI models. So what kind of typical AI model would you consider given there are several good AI models in the market right now? So because we're talking about Instagram here, which is under Meta, so Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that Meta will stick to Llama. Uh, They recently launched Llama 3, which is doing way better than Llama 2 was. Mm -hmm. So my assumption is that they would stick to that. Now, if I were to talk about a different company, though, and, you know, with that company, what kind of model would I use if they already don't have existing models out there? Yeah, I would say that the top right now and this was a recent research was published, uh, Claude by Anthropic has mm-hmm. rated number has been rated number one in terms of LLMs. Because of their large context window, window, because of the amount of information that they have, Mm -hmm. uh, affordability and ease of use. If I were to build something or, you know, if I go to a company where we want to build something using an existing foundation model, uh, I would look at Claude by Anthropic. The second on the list was, I believe, ChatGPT. The Mm -hmm. third was Pi by Inflection AI. And Mm -hmm. Inflection AI was a company which was launched along with ChatGPT. Uh, Not a lot of people had heard about it. They were, you know, still, they still had just beta users then, but they are doing very well now in terms of the results that they provide users with. Of course, after that, you have Llama and Gemini that you Mm -hmm. can look at. And also it depends on your use case and, you know, your your budget, the number of iterations that you need. Because again, uh, I think, for example, for Gemini, uh, they say is a little more expensive to use uh, the mm-hmm. advanced version than, uh, than, than Anthropic. So you would just need to look at, you know, what are the different parameters that you're looking at as you're deciding on a model to use. Makes sense. So now let's lay out potential implement and think about specific mm-hmm. models that would shoot for uh, suitable for what type of features. Now you mentioned the key feature regarding search, which I believe uh, they are typically like definitely lacking behind based on search feature. Even TikTok already has those important search features implemented on the platform right now. So mm-hmm. besides this, what are the important alley, uh, like AI features that you think Instagram need to consider and catch up with the competition? Yeah. I would say the other thing would be um, think as as I talked about not don't only think about Instagram as an entertainment resource, but mm-hmm. also think about what are the positives or uh, that you can get out of it. What are the learnings that you can get out of it? Which means that in addition to this being a one way communication app, where you look at it, you look at a video, you look at a reel, and you laugh about it. What if you could use it to actually learn about something? So think about the fact that you're trying to, so let's say I want to go to Italy 
and yeah. I want to learn about what are the different spots in Italy uh, mm-hmm. that I should be visiting. Uh, mm-hmm. Where should I be staying? Where should I be traveling? For example, right? Also, let's take your persona. You are a mom of two kids. You have very limited time on your hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, half your time is spent uh, sh- shuffling your kids around to different activities. <laughs> yes. So, so during your your travel or while you're driving. What if you could actually listen on Instagram? You could give it the prompt that, hey, you know, help me identify different places, different cuisines uh, or different restaurants that I could stop at. Uh, and you would then get this information from different influencers on Inst- on Instagram. You would have this information and then you could convert it into a conversational AI. So mm-hmm. you would ask the Instagram AI assistant that, okay, uh, you mentioned about this um this this specific place where I could get some really good squid ink pasta. Uh, what is squid ink pasta? Does it have right. any allergens? Can you talk to me about that? So it would first give you that information. Mm-hmm. And then it would tell you what are the best places to get that. And then you say, okay, my two-year-old kid has a peanut allergy. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you recommend places that I can go to, you know, keeping that in mind? And it would give you the answers. Uh, you would say that, you know, I have my family for what are the best places to stay in. And then you would get the information through those through those influencers and the name of the place as well. Uh, so you could then, you know, think about it and maybe make your bookings later, etc. Mm-hmm. So this way you have done a major chunk of your work while you are traveling. And not only this, but other things as well, like, you know, you're trying to learn about something like food blogging, for example, and how do I do that? Or how do I make a podcast? And the reason that I'm talking about all of these different features and functionalities on Instagram is -hmm. because most people, like on average, uh, spend maybe 1.5 hours just watching reels on Instagram. Yeah. Um, So again, how do you make, uh, you know, how do you convert that into better utilization of their time Mm -hmm. uh, while, you know, while they can get something out of it? So that's, yeah. Yeah, Hadiga, I really love the new AI feature you discussed. I personally love it because I'm a big learner. I also love long form content because I believe that actually spending long hours of learning is going to master something, like even watching 60 second reels, you're not going to learn anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, all the content becomes shorter and shorter. Even if we recently launched this part of Insider Podcast, which you're a guest on our podcast, everyone needs to follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, right? People who want to learn, of course, they want to learn through long form content. But the purpose of Instagram is not to educate. The purpose of Instagram, if you mm-hmm. see the North Star metrics, the mission of the company is to build communities, have influencers to connect with their fans. And that's why they make some short form content. That's why they kind of want to quote, waste your time on the platform because that's more addicting. But if you change it for the purpose of learning, purpose of planning, you make people actually use Instagram less because they can get the result much faster. Why they need to watch 100 reels to get one result, but if you can use AI to get result within watching two or three reels, right? It's against mm-hmm. the North Star of the company. So, so isn't AI really helping okay. or hurting Instagram? So let me give you this example. Mm-hmm. Um, you follow this particular celebrity on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. You go there, you want to look at, you know, what are they doing? Where are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they wearing? For all of this information, you come to Instagram. I, am I right? Yeah. Okay. Now think about, now you want to, you know, make your travel plans or you want to make your dinner plans, for example. Mm-hmm. And you say, hey, uh, you know, could you recommend some places to me which have been, you know, which has some great uh Uh, some great deep dish pizza and the results contain some of the top influencers on Instagram, which have talked about it, about the best deep dish pizza in your area. These influences could be people that you follow, or these could be ones who have millions of other followers, which means that the results that you're getting are pretty legit. So this is something that Instagram is, is ensuring across both sides of the marketplace. So as a consumer, you are getting a very legitimate result based on your needs. But also as a creator, you are getting more coverage across coverage across more users based on their needs and asks. A lot of people could be following you and you could be making those reels and people could be getting ideas that, you know, mm-hmm. okay, maybe next time I'll go to this place. But for other people who actually 
have that need that, okay, I need this deep dish pizza tonight or tomorrow, that is the search result that you are coming up on. And that's the reason how you are incre increasing as a, as a creator, you are increasing your influencership, your influencership. But as a consumer, you are getting the right information. Now, if you were to do the same research on a Yelp, on a Google, of course, you will get answers. Mm -hmm. But with RAM, because you are already there, you don't have to switch across platforms. You're not asking for something which for, for some content, which is not already there. It's yeah. all there. It's just more filtered and more concise and more, um, you know, it's more personalized to your needs based on your past history and behavior. Oh, I love this. And also the definition of influencers also change in this manner. And now let's talk about some hands-on experience. Let's assume you do need to build this feature without using existing like model by by Meta today. So okay. what kind of models would you train on? Where did you collect the data? What do you think is the number one challenge to really enable this AI feature? I would say two Two top challenges. Number one would be uh, would be identifying what data points I need to use to train any model uh, mm -hmm. that I'm gonna get, and number two will be selecting the model for my use case. Yeah. So with respect to data points, uh, I think think about it as, as 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 a traditional product manager. Think of okay, my output is that I want to provide personalized results to consumers based on their search queries. Um, and my input, therefore, is going to be uh, ab about, you know, the the users which are already there, what kind of content is already present, how do I filter that content based on certain keywords, mm -hmm. provide it within search results, how do I uh, prioritize that content to make sure that I'm not overwhelming the user with too many search results, and yeah. how do I also ensure that they, the legitimacy is maintained? Mm -hmm. So how do I provide uh, people who have enough followers across? And in this process, again, as a product manager, think about edge cases that you don't want to isolate uh, consumer or create which who don't have enough followers as right. well so you know as a product manager think about you know how can you help other creators get more followers which will be a, a, a separate use case for you to think about but here we are trying to answer the first primary question uh, once we have identified these different data points that we want to feed into the model the mm -hmm. second will be to identify which model do i go with so yeah. as I talked about, there are multiple models out there in the market. Now, based on my needs, based on my budget, based on the amount of data that I have, and based on the amount of fine tuning, as well as retraining that would be required for mm -hmm. this data set, I would then start looking at models. Uh, Claude 3 by Anthro uh, Claude by Anthropic is something that I mentioned. Um, and as I'm learning more and more about Amazon, Amazon Bedrock appears like a very strong model because yeah. it has text recognition, it has speech recognition, it also has image recognition. Mm -hmm. So think about how within Instagram, not only do you have to always give a voice prompt, but at one point you'll also start incorporating image gender image prompts. And that's right. where Bedrock can be an amazing model because you insert the image and based off of that, it will give you answers based on the questions that you ask it. So so as a product manager, think long term. So don't only think about, oh, right now I just have to do a speech to text conversion. No, mm -hmm. later you will have to do image to text conversion as well. Uh, after you have to think about accessibility settings as well. You'll also most importantly need to think about safety and how do you filter out certain content. So based off of that too, think about the model and the size of the model that you're going to incorporate to build out your solution. Perfect. I love how you have a very comprehensive answer to figure out what exactly is the right model. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's more about your thinking process. Of course, depends on what company you work for. If you're for Amazon, Meta, you have lots of budget, go for the best. If you're a startup, you're trying to prove concept, find the product market fit, you probably want to do some short, uh, like uh, shortened solution and then build for your long-term success as well. So there's many different things we need to consider mm -hmm. as a modern AI PM today. You mentioned safety a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. I do want to dive deeper. I do think social media safety is something everybody will talk about. And also trust safety is also what AI product manager and you think about on the day-to-day -day basis. So can you dive deeper regarding trust and safety for Instagram? Can AI actually help or even hurt us 
Um, I think AI, for the most part, can help us with figuring out or with regulating safety and safe content on Instagram and, of course, other social media apps as well. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand there's been a lot of back and forth about, you know, the content which has been present on these apps. And while mm-hmm. we we do have AI, we've had AI for, for decades now, we still haven't been able to solve that problem 100%. Uh, and parents are still concerned about their kids using uh, these apps exactly yeah. for this reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I talk about safety, I believe that think about uh, like like you you start with smaller things. So you start with certain keywords that you don't want to show people. Mm-hmm. You start with identifying certain images that you don't want to show. And that is the process of training. So you have your training data and then you have your test data, right? Which is a, the very basic of AI. So yeah. you get that training data set ready so that you can start filtering out keywords. You can start filtering out certain uh, explicit images which you don't want seen on the app. You start filtering out any kind of speech or tone that you don't want displayed who are using the app. And based off of this, you continue to retrain your data. The process would be very iterative. And this is a big problem to solve, I would agree and I would admit to that because there are a lot of yeah. different ways out there that people can uh, you know uh, find loopholes or they can inject certain certain ways to get to uh, to get to people like you can find perpetrators you can find stalkers on on, on these different apps which you have mm-hmm. to you know uh, w- which you have to prevent your or protect your children against one thing so in terms of prevention these are the steps which need to be taken which is filter out all of that content and continue to train uh, your data your existing data set as well as the incoming data set mm-hmm. so that while you will not know right off the bat all the hundreds of thousands of use cases which are out there you can at least get smarter enough about training and filtering those out that's number one the second thing is that assuming that such content has actually gone in and people have started seeing it. Now, as an organization, what do you do about it? So the first and foremost thing is obviously take it down, uh, make sure that that kind of content is no longer visible, but also take strict actions against those content creators. Uh, Mm -hmm. I would say that companies like Meta, like TikTok, they do have access to identities of people who are putting that content out there. Yeah. So what can they do to make sure that these people are not on these portals anymore? And that's where, and this is a bigger strategic objective which companies need to have, which is to work together. So I, as Meta, for example, if I see this uh, this account XYZ, which has created this uh, this video or this this post, which is very inappropriate and has posted and I've taken it down, mm-hmm. I think it is my ethical responsibility to also share it with my competitors and make sure that every other social media giant which has millions of followers out there takes it down as well working together is what will help and this is what you know the recent congress sessions have been about as well that together as social media like what are you doing to curb any kind of inappropriate content or violence which is being perpetrated through social media in a nutshell dr nancy this is a big problem to solve we can use preventive measures, which will not be 100% mm-hmm. until we are, you know, very, very uh, careful about training our data and we are very re- religious about it. But also the second part is that we all, like companies need to work together on this to make sure that their own consumers are not being influenced or harassed by their own products. Yeah, well said, uh, Hadika. I think the trust and safety is a long run for all the social media company, all TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram and everything all, uh, all together. So now, but this topic has been around for so long. So my question to you is, why the old AI model that been training is not good enough? What's new? How can we do it better? For example, last time when we had Robert Latham was a ex VP of product from Google. He's also working on ads. Even for ads, there's improper content. They need to use AI to remove it. His team has been working on this topic for more than 10 years, but it's still kind of not solved, right? So using today's technology, how can you make it better? How can we solve the problem much more efficient compared with before? That's a great point. Today's technology with using Gen AI is faster. 
uh mm. the earlier technology where we didn't have these foundation models i think there everyone did whatever they could to the maximum that they could to make sure that you know that they could filter out content as much as possible the mm. problem was there's way more content than there are the number of people or than there are ai algorithms to filter it today with foundation models with llms you have the opportunity to do it or to filter these out on a much bigger scale in a much faster manner because you have so many more parameters that you could insert and you have quick window to launch these models again and again this is being tested right now mm-hmm. because you know genia has only been there for maybe a year or so now but if we can be quick about it especially startups again because these unicorn startup you know especially the ones who are focused on trust and safety they could really help out with building the right models and then supplying them to other companies to filter out this to 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 make sure that trust and safety is managed across so i would say that with gen ai uh, the speed is almost 100x and that's the reason why we can solve this I want to solve this problem but mitigate this issue a hundred times faster than we could two years ago. I see. So it's more about the efficiency of solving the problem compared with like ten years ago when Robstein did it. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And by the way, guys, if you're interested in learning about how Rob and X. VP of product Google, how he led product teams was in Google. You guys should check out this video right here and also listen to our product insider podcast and right after this episode. And this is so awesome. And also want to remind everybody what Hadika, the framework Hadika used to create this amazing like ideas, not like amazing, not just the ideas, it's actually realistic product strategies Meta can use on the day-to-day basis. It's used by Gucci framework, which was invented by me. It was also one of the most popular, actually the most popular and effective product strategy framework. Everybody needs to check it out. You can check out the video right here to learn more. I'm also going to link it in the description of this video. We actually also dive way deeper of Gucci framework inside of PM Accelerator. You guys can check out more uh, in the link of the description as well. And so Hadika, also want to, let, let's, l- let me ask one final question regarding, given all the companies are putting AI on their roadmap today, what specific advice would you want to give those startups or existing product manager want to work on AI? What are the top one or two things they need to uh, keep in mind uh, keep in mind when using AI technology? Yeah, I would say the top things as as a product manager, especially when using AI, is that be realistic with the use of AI. So think about what are the top problems. Problems is the wrong word. Opportunities. Mm-hmm. What are the top opportunities where you can make your processes more efficient using AI? And this goes back to the earlier example that I shared about Uber Eats. That I'd yeah. love to order off of Uber Eats. I'm just too lazy to try a new restaurant every time because that means me doing research on it, which I don't have the time for. Mm-hmm. What if there was AI, which way I would just give it a prompt based on my needs, and it would do the research and it would tell me the top two or three restaurants. Which are the best in my area where I could order from? So again, no user may have complained about it, but you know, you as a product manager, look at your metrics on a day-to-day basis, and you think about how can I improve user growth? How can I improve restaurant growth? How can I improve retention and conversion on my platform? And how can I use AI to do that? So that is the top thing. Like think about. Every aspect of your product, and in within that, where can you incorporate AI, both in the front end as well as the back end? Like, how can you improve your processes? How mm-hmm. can you improve everything from ticket creation to infrastructure management to processing speeds using AI? That would be number one. Number two, again, as a product manager, think about the safety implications of all of it. So you are using AI, which means that you're using customer data, which mm-hmm. you would be training your models on. So yeah. how do you make sure that this data is not going to go out there? It's not, I mean, it's not going to get leaked, but also it's going to be used in a positive way, in a productive way, to make customers' life more efficient, not in a way that would actually be become、uh, harassing for them. After a point, so you need to, you know, draw the fine line between using the data for good versus, you know, using the data and then 
this being out on the dark web, which you as a product manager are responsible for. The third thing would be as a product manager, continue to track your metrics. As I mentioned, mm-hmm. point one, your KPI, your metrics, they are the most important thing. It will tell you which strategies are working versus not. And yeah. based off of that, continue to refine your strategies. This is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with us today and which is a great example of what a product leader need to do. And, and that's why you land a really great role at uh, Amazon. Looking forward to, to see all the amazing features you personally launch in Amazon and bring you back uh, once, it's, once it's launched and share with a new insight regarding real life examples launching amazing product, amazing AI uh, amazing Gen AI product in fan companies. Hey guys, if you find this free training and interview very insightful, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel so that we have motivation to make more videos like this. This is Dark Nancy Lee from PMXCerator.io. I'm see you in my next video right here. And thank you for joining us, Hadika. Thank you, Dr. Nancy.